here's a little step outside what I'm used to working with. This is a Colt Uberti. It is a replica. I believe it is an 1851 Navy or I don't remember the actual date on it, but I will uh, try and remember to put that in the annotations. But it has a broken mainspring and uh, it came to me with this already removed here. I just wanted to show you all, in case any of you all have one of these. You'll see a pair of flathead screws there, one there, one there. And I believe yep, you can see where all the holes are there. Now, in order to remove this, this back strap really should have been removed first. To be quite honest with you, I don't know how they got this out of there without removing that. That is done by those two screws right there. So we're going to set that off to the side. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to remove the first part here. The front end, your barrel and everything. Let's see. Now, see right here this pin? If you look on this side, there's a little clip there. The idea here is to tap that through. Now it's not 100% necessary that you push that clip in, but I'm going to just because it's the right thing to do. Brass hammer. Brass punch. Set that off to the side. Now this has been removed. And this should, you might have to wiggle it just a little bit. Turn it, but it will separate. The gentleman's definitely shot this. Good bit actually. I'll be cleaning all that up. Once this is done, pull your hammer back a little bit and your cylinder will slide right off. There's where your percussion caps go. Clean all this up and frog lube it. you guys get a good look at that and you can see a good bit of dust in there also something I want to point out see right down there it's that's a hand just like on your modern revolvers so you can see a lot of the heritage of modern revolvers looking at this one Again, I preach and preach about using proper gunsmith screwdrivers. It's worth the investment if you're going to work on guns, even your own guns. Um, most of these screwdriver sets, like these Forster ones that I use, this is actually a Forster kit. But uh, each one of these is, see, like this is the Forster number 16. Uh, you can get their stuff. At ForsterProducts.com, at least look at it. Or if any of you all are interested in any of the tooling you see me using or anything like that, please send me an email and I'll get you good pricing on the stuff. Uh, that's what I do. So uh, 
I'd be more than happy to sell you some products and I'll try and save you some money. But either way, instead of buying the entire kit, you can get just one or two screwdrivers. Like if you only have one or two different guns, well, they know what screwdrivers that gun takes. And they can tell you, and we can order you just the screwdriver that you need for working on the guns that you own. And that'll save you a lot of money, and it'll save you a lot of money and headache in the long run by you not tearing up the heads of your screws and your firearm and all that. Especially on something like this that's old and nice. You don't want to let it get damaged by basically neglect. And that's what it is whenever you're using the wrong screwdrivers and stuff. Alright, now, for now, what we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead, you see what that looks like with that off there. I'm going to go ahead and replace these screws back right where they came out of, the same thread holes. All the threads look like they're in good shape on this, but just because I've preached in the past <laughs> that that's what is a good thing to do, that is what I'm going to do here in this case too. Be consistent with it. Of course, for all I know, the guy that took this apart did not put these right back where they came from. He may have, because they were, when I got it, they were in to the receiver here, so... He may have done so, but in this case the threads are all in good shape. They're not marred up or anything, so I think we're okay. Now normally I'll just kind of run them in there a little bit, but since I'm going to have to, I'm going to scrub on this and everything a little bit, I'm going to run these in just a little bit more than normal so they don't come out. <clears throat> Alright, now you'll notice on the grip. This can actually be pushed out, and it looks like we're bent just a little bit right there. Not much, but a little bit. That must be how they got that out of there. So I'll have to straighten that up a little bit. And uh, there's the grips. Try and slow down. The way I turn all this stuff, I've been watching some of my videos and I tend to just say, hey, hey, here's this and throw it down and I guess if you guys really want a good look at it, you could hit pause, but that's not really fair to make you have to do that all the time. So anyways, where are we at here? Now on the left hand side of the receiver is our hardware. First thing we're going to do though is remove our trigger spring. It's this one right here. I have to actually go to a thinner blade. Alright, maybe one of these will work. That one's so small, I don't like using it unless I have to because it's, it's real apt to actually damaging a screwdriver. Do it to it. Not gonna go. I may have to go against what I preach and go with a normal screwdriver, one that I won't tear up the screwdriver. Completely different way of thinking about it. Normally I'm talking about tearing up the screws and this time I'm talking about tearing up the screwdriver. <laughs> Here we go, I think this might work. This is not your normal square bits. This little setup here, actually it's got squared off, squared off bits as well, so. Boy, that's 
in there. That's in there that tight. is in there. Goodness gracious. I'm going to throw the video off so I don't just keep on wasting air time and uh, find me a good screwdriver and then I'll start it back. Alright, now what I'm about to do here I really urge you to take the most caution if you ever try this. This is an impact, which the whole point is that it will impact there. There's no way to use a normal screwdriver and get that impact effect on stuff like that, but if you ever use something like that, like this one, it's just a Craftsman 14.4, uh, but it's very controllable, um, and I'm used to using it. Make sure you have the right bit, make sure you have everything where you have good positive pressure on it, and you don't have to just go hammer down, you know, that, that, I just barely touched the, it just took one little tap of that hammer set up, and it came right off, so, one of those things that, that's what I do in situations like that. But that's almost a do as I say, not as I do thing because you can get into some trouble that way. All I can say is you better know your equipment. Now we're going to pull the trigger spring out there. Now, see if I can get a get you a good look in there. There's our hand poking up through there. Alright. On these, I'm going to go ahead and loosen them. Just make sure they're broken loose. Okay, they are. So this bottom one here, this one right here is for the trigger. Go ahead and remove it. So you can see that went through like that. Like I say, you want to be careful with loosening these screws and everything. I see so many people that are so careless with using a screwdriver. They mar everything. 